Same thing, be a good thing to maybe tape that on your forehead. I don't know. Uh, but I kind of like the way he explained number seven because that's with, with Baptists, that's the touchy thing about financial, about financial prosperity. And I think he handled that really well. Um, if you've paid attention, when, 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 we, when a church has a good staff, which we have, very fortunate, um, I don't know that anybody, if I can just say because I'm in here, a church is a business, it's a people business. And there's not, there's not a business on earth that you can run without financial aid to run it. But when you, let, when you allow the Lord to supply that financial aid, it's going to be better than anything else you could do anyway. So, and he's, he's, he's treating us right, right kind of well right now with that. I don't know whether I want to do the, read the verses first and then get kicked off or what I want to do. Let's read the verses first. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Time out. <laughs> hmm? Billy, open us up in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for the glorious day you've given us today. To, uh, we just love to come uh, study your word, hear your message, uh, fellowship with each other. And uh, like Alan said, you know, what do you do without a church family that have to get through week to week and day to day? We just pray now that you'll be with each and every one of us in the coming week. We just uh, be singing your name. Amen. Just a minute, I also got a clean bill of health this week. Yes. Yeah. Good. Right. You just finally cleaned the kitchen. I did that. Oh. Mm, mm, mm. You just don't learn. Sorry, I'm sorry. Sorry, back, <laughs> Welcome back, Bill. Let me, let me tell y'all something real quick before we get into I'm just, because I'm proud as punch right now. We went to a, a meeting up in Madisonville yesterday, and our preacher gave a talk. <clears throat> And it's, it's a practice talk for an upcoming event, right? He blew their socks off. Yeah, he does. He was on fire to the point when he got done with his 40-minute talk, the guy running the session stood up in front of everybody and said, let's all take about three or four minutes to just shut up and let that soak in was a for me for chris and everybody from here that was there we told everybody came up afterwards and said stuff and we said you just got a taste of what we get every sunday he it, it was it was phenomenal he laid everybody back in their seats and they and everybody when he was done was going hmm Gave him plenty to think about. Anyway, just wanted to share that because it was, he was awesome. He was uh, awesome here, but he's awesome there. So another selfish thing that's really selfish, but uh, I was a little late signing up to go to that, and uh, I haven't, they haven't uh, been able to find a place for me. I would really like to go to that. So if you think about it, uh, I'd, I'd like to go to that. That has to come from an invitation of something to do or some something that I'd be work, working on while I was there, but I'm, if I don't go to that, it'd be the first year in about three years that I hadn't been to that. But I, like I said, I was late signing up, so that's part of the problem. Anyway, um, got a couple of our guys. Obviously, our preacher is going to be speaking, and, and Chris is going to be speaking also. And I, I'd love to hear that. So all of us would probably love to hear that. We got a great, great preacher, but we got some pretty good men in this church who can bring the word pretty good, and Chris was one of them. Um, anyway, with that said, uh, let's read some verses. Please. <clears throat> Go ahead, Mr. Tony. Please. I need to start adding please to things. Please and thank you. Please and thank you. One of the two which heard to John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first findeth his own brother Simon and saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is, being interpreted, the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus beheld him, he said, 
Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. Keep going. Uh, you, you just stay there a minute. Uh, thank you, Tony. Uh, the very first verse, and I didn't think about this until he read it. Until he read it, one of the two which heard John speak. John, yeah, we're in the book of John, right? Yeah. When you read the book of John and you hear the name John, who is he talking about? John the Baptist. He does not. John. John is one of them unique characters. He does not refer to himself as John. His favorite term is the disciple that Jesus loved. He does the same trickery in this verse. One of the two which heard John speak, Baptist, and, the, and followed him was Andrew. One of the two. We got Andrew. Who's the other one? Nope. It's John. It's John. It's John. He doesn't refer to himself. He just says one of the two. And he, then Andrew's name's listed. So that, that's a little, little fun fact in the lesson. That I don't the other verses. You see it, Melissa? He, he bad. I've all, I always said the first time I ever read John, I'm thinking, like, what an arrogant son of a good man. He just named, named it. And then I found out later on, Jesus gave Mary to him. I think maybe he was right. <laughs> maybe he is the Pretty good the possibility. Pretty good, Pretty good possibility. Pretty good possibility. One of the only ones standing at the foot of the cross, too. Well, time. you know, another way to look, uh, flip it over a little bit, is this was written after this discipleship with Jesus. So maybe he figured out that's what Jesus referred to him as. Tell you, man, Billy got some death. He just don't talk about it. He may not have thought that while he was following him. Probably not. Well, we're going to talk about that. <coughs> That's, that's kind of in the lesson. Billy must have looked at the lesson. Oh, he told off on himself. We got the next ones up there. <coughs> Les, can you read it? The day following Jesus would go forth into Galilee and find it Philip and say unto him, Follow me. Now, Philip was the same to the side of the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip findeth Nathanael and saith unto him, We have found him, of whom Moses is the law, and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there be any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip saith unto him, Come and see. I can't do this. Go back to the first verses. Whoa. <laughs> One of the things that we don't, that maybe y'all, I didn't think about. John refers to John the Baptist like really quick right there. Y'all remember that John the Baptist had a following, right? He had disciples. John the Baptist had disciples. That's two of them right there. John and Andrew are two of John the Baptist's followers. Okay, disciples. If you looked at the lesson or if you study about it, that's a big deal back in those days. There was always someone or many someones that were rabbis, teachers, and they literally went out and would cherry pick the cream of the crop of the students at that time. What you would think that John and Andrew were type of a student, a disciple. A disciple following somebody, John the Baptist. They picked a good one. They picked a good one. They're following him. Do we notice what happened? They met Jesus and they changed direction and started following Jesus. <clears throat> hmm. That's exactly what John the Baptist wanted them to do. Yeah. It's exactly what he wanted them to do. <clears throat> huh? Go ahead. No, that's, uh, he just said this is the man that you need to follow. Absolutely. Now, did, go, now you go back. <clears throat> did John the Baptist know Jesus? Such a trick question. <laughs> did he know Jesus? <laughs> did, 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 Melissa, did, did John he, the Baptist yeah. know Jesus before they were even born? born yeah. Okay. <laughs> but did John the Baptist know Jesus was the Messiah? Yeah. He yes. did. Yeah. Did he? He did. Watch yeah. out, that's a tricky one. Yeah. <laughs> he knew it in the womb. Yeah. He still they made note of it in the lesson, and I never really thought about it. Watch out. Well, <laughs> made, I'm bringing it up for discussion. Okay. He made mention in the lesson that he did not, he 
John the Baptist knew Jesus but did not realize who he was until after he baptized him and the dove came down and the voice is that right? Wait a minute. It sounds it's logical to me. It, it, it doesn't. Well, that's why I'm it bringing it up. Sound logical. John, John left in his he left in his mother's womb when Mary walked in with Jesus. He knew who Jesus was. Oh, absolutely. He didn't know him personally. Yeah. Yeah, he did. Not as a only in the flesh, what I'm trying to say. I don't know. I don't know. That's a tricky one. I read that one and I couldn't get my mind off of it. I couldn't wrap my mind around it because that's not logical. I think from what I studied, I don't know, but I'm a, this is my opinion. Hey, everybody else gets by with it when they say this is my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that at that point in time, the lesson, the lesson speaking, we're not hearing from John, the lesson speaking to this guy's opinion is speaking to us. I think he's making reference to John. Not John the Baptist, but to John. When John is baptizing Jesus, what happens? John, John, John points him out and says, there's the, there's the lamb. Mm -hmm. That's Jesus in the flesh looking at him. There's the lamb. Jesus said, John, you need to, I'm going to redneck it, y'all. John, you need to baptize me. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Yeah. Wait a minute. I, I'm not even fit to unlatch your shoes. Again, not logical if he doesn't know who that is. Yeah. And Jesus says, you need to do this so everyone else can see. That, that verse, those verses, if, if Becky was here, those, after those, those verses caused me to get baptized at 21 years old because mm -hmm. I knew I'd never been baptized. My, my lesson was if Jesus Christ got baptized, I guess I better go get baptized. Mm -hmm. Sound like a good thing to do. Sound like a good thing to do. And then what happened? when he baptizes it. What comes from heaven? A dove and lands on his shoulder. you got a picture of the Trinity right there. God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit landing on that. dove is a picture of the Holy Spirit. Again, logical. My study says that that, and I read that in the lesson. In well, the, I, the reason I brought it up was because I got hung up on it too. Okay. So I figure if, if anybody can figure it out, this group can figure it out. But, you know, I believe John knew that Jesus was the Son of God. But, you know, even as us as Christians, over time, the depth of what he knew about Jesus grew. And so you can know something, but sometimes your mind has to grasp it and get to that point of reality of, Good rebuttal. Good, yeah. good rebuttal. Good. So, so my, 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 my mind on my take studying it, I believe it's for the benefit of John. John and Angel did not realize that, that this is the Messiah. But to Kim's point, later on before John the Baptist dies, the cousin, the guy that flipped in the womb of his mother, mm -hmm. what does he do? Y'all remember? Great, great. Uh huh? He asked Jesus if he was the Messiah. <laughs> he, said, he sent one of his little followers. He, 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 said, he sent his disciples and said, go to him and say, is it really you? Are you the one? Because the human side, Kim, Kim brings up even another great example that I had to learn the hard way. Even John the Baptist doubted it. We're human beings. We're going to... Oh, I've never doubted my salvation. Well, get on the vacuum because you're probably the only one that's never done that. <laughs> but, I mean, that's just our human nature because we can't understand and we can't fathom. Why do we keep sinning if we're saved? Because it's a sanctification process. We're going to read the rest of them? <laughs> I don't know. You keep backing me up. <laughs> uh, Kim, anybody want to read? Volunteer? Go ahead, Melissa. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said to him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no God. Nathanael said unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. Nathanael answered and said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. John the Baptist pointed John 
and Andrew to Jesus. John and Andrew pointed who to Jesus? Who did John and Andrew point to Jesus? It's a little lesson there. Easy. Come on, Rock. Peter and Nathaniel. Who? Peter and Nathaniel. Peter and James. James. The sons of thunder. James and John, the sons of thunder. And who did who did Philip? Don't, don't let this get by you. Who went straight to Philip? Jesus. And who did Philip go to? Nathaniel. Every single one of them had a personal story about the experience on how they came to Jesus. What happened in these verses to Nathaniel? A couple of things happened. One, Jesus proved who he was because he looked at Nathaniel and said, Behold an Israelite. He looked at his heart. Where there, where there is no God. Hmm? Israelite, there's no God. Right. That's good night to tell me. He looked, at, he looked at Nathaniel's heart. Who can look at a heart? Who can touch your heart? He's the only one. He proved that was, a, if you will, a supernatural event. Just explaining to Nathaniel just who he was. He compared, he compared in, in, the lesson, in the lesson, if you looked at it, he compared Nathaniel to Jacob. And y'all remember Jacob at an early age is a deceiver. And then along the way, God changes Jacob's heart, mind and heart, and, turn, and then he renames him as Israel, which meant he, he was finally riding his heart. And he, he gave Nathan the same notice that, hey, here's an Israelite with no God. He's, he's already faithfully believing that there's a Messiah. He's a studied man. He's a learned man. And it is, he says, you were under a fig tree. That was, a, that was a place where the people that studied the Word at that time would go sit in peace and tranquility and study God's Word. Jesus knew. And when he told Nathaniel that, because of what, the, what Nathaniel knew from studying, is it important to study? Absolutely. Because Jesus knew him as, as what he was studying under that fig tree. He says, here's a guy with no God. He doesn't have any. He's got a good and faithful, faithful heart. And, and again, Jacob's, Jacob's ladder is alluded to in those verses. And I thought about that. I've never thought about Jacob's ladder being a way to make it to heaven. Mm -hmm. Then there's, you know, Phil Cross writes that song, Jesus built the bridge and da da da. He's the way to heaven. And he's the only way. Nathaniel points it out. He said, You are him. He knows. He's him. The, Hold on. It's coming. G U I L E. That's evil. What? That that refers to that's a fisherman's term. That's a fisherman's term for chum. He was a, Nathaniel was a fisherman. Those guys were fishermen. That, that's a word they use for chum, chumming stuff. Got it. Did we read everything yet? Hmm? Have we read everything yet? Good. <laughs> I told Brad we was going to do something different. Um. I'll do it this way. You know, I learned a long time ago that you can learn from things that you did in the past. You don't need to dwell in the past. But every now and then you need to take a visit to the past and figure out, hey, where, where was I then and where am I now? You know what I'm saying? So back, back yonder, back about five, it seemed like it wasn't that long ago, but it passes pretty fast. About five, six years ago, we were looking for a preacher. And at, at the end of the search, at the end of the day, the team that, that, was, that did the search, we all got up on a platform. And we gave y'all, give everyone in the church our testimony for why we had chosen the man we chose. I listened to, I gave one and listened to ten other testimonies. None of them were the same. None of them. None of them. Each man had chosen their preacher based on what they felt in their heart. 
Okay? Each one of these men choose to go with Jesus because of what they felt in their heart. Because every one of his experiences is different. John and Andrew is, is, is pointed it, John and Andrew is pointed to is pointed to Christ by John the Baptist. Uh, James and Peter are pointed to, to Christ by Andrew and John. And then Philip's approached by Christ on his own. It's a personal thing. And then Nathaniel's approach to is approached by Philip to go see who I found. And of course, his remark was, does anything good come out of Nazareth? Well, he found out, didn't he? Yes. So here's the deal. Let's take a few minutes, because we all, we like to all talk. <laughs> Anybody want to share their own personal testimony on how they met Jesus? And keep it short, please. But I, I, don't make me point. Well, I was at church camp, and I can't remember I was young. I don't remember how either young I was. That was a long time ago. It was a long time ago. Um, and they preached on hell. <laughs> so quite honestly, I went down there because I did not want to go to hell. <laughs> and that's not a bad reason to go. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? That's him. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. That, that's him. That's him. 1954, I went to a grand duty camp, Lake Texoma, and like all the Baptists, I said as far back as I could get. And That's Baptist protocol. They, they preached, they preached about hell. It scared the heck out of me. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, go ahead and say they scared the hell out of me. I, I was more scared of getting up, walking down that aisle. I did not want to have to walk down in front of all those people okay. and, and let them know that, that I was a sinner. And I sat there and held on that chair in front of them until service was over. And then, then I got out and everything was pretty good until they turned the lights out that night. I thought, if the Lord comes back tonight, I'm going to hell. <laughs> so I come out of my bed and walk to the church. <coughs> I said, we're going to take care of this tonight. We might not have tomorrow, and I'm scared. <laughs> so, Jenny, Jenny, Jenny Burns. Uh, I just I just can't even remember how old I, young I was, but there was me and five of my siblings sitting in church, and I walked the aisle and came to the Lord. I just knew him. They all said, oh, you're going to be in trouble when you get home, but I wasn't. <laughs> but my mind didn't catch up to my heart until mm -hmm. I was like 21, 22 years old, and I came to this church and walked the aisle with Brother Jeff mm -hmm. and understood what I got back then. Yeah. yeah, I'm a little different from probably most of you in here. He's, you wasn't by or what? No, I'm just... Then on her, I didn't know till much later what had ever happened to me. But he didn't ever give up on me either. That's why I say I'm a little different than most of you in here. I've been in, my mother took me to church as a young child and everything else. I didn't really pay much attention. What got my attention was when one of my children looked at me and said, I'm not sure I'm going to see you in heaven. Oh, I'll do it. Yeah, if that won't rattle your world, mm -hmm. but it made me sit up and, and take stock of myself. So how, how we get there in the personal experience we have, the one thing that doesn't change, it's all the same. The salvation's an easy thing. You've got to have a, a mind change that changes the heart. Jenny, Jenny, I like Jenny. Jenny said her mind did not catch up with her heart. Her heart changed first. It's a heart change. It's not a head change, it's a heart change. Yeah. Uh, and that, that's the, that is the same thing with every single one of us. You have to have a heart change that makes a mind change happen. And sometimes our mind change doesn't happen until somewhere down the road. 42 years old for me. I, I, don't, I have doubted my salvation. I was so young. At nine, at nine, which would have been about 1961 if you would call years out. Was it um, church camp too? Wasn't it at mine was at, at, the, at that uh, stinking uh, thing we did up once a week at that uh, um, camp meeting that we had, that preacher. Oh, I, that tabernacle thing? Yeah, Granddaddy made us sit up on the front row, and I'm, I mean, that preacher, he come, 
He stood over the top of it pointing down like this, going like, you're going to burn in hell. I'm like, oh, I don't want to do that. Uh, but uh, who else? nine years old and I got saved. She, I grew up in a Southern Baptist church and was involved with a group of girls called GAs that my mother led. And we did a lot of memorization from verses in the Bible. And one Wednesday night, those verses came to life for me. Yep. It, they weren't just verses anymore. <coughs> but, you know, it's like you said, it is a heart change, but God meets us wherever we're at. He He will He will meet us. It's we just have to accept that, and then um, let Him be our story. You know, He already knows our story, but when we surrender to Him um, and let Him guide us, our, we can go a long way if we just wouldn't fight it. <laughs> okay. Anybody else? I had a little epiphany. Oh boy. About I don't know well, I was on a cruise. <laughs> but it, it just kind of struck me. I was thinking over past Sunday school lessons and I said something about marriage one time. And I'm sitting there thinking, you know, also did you with our relationship, it's like a marriage is if I didn't speak to Anthony very often, I wouldn't have you. much of a marriage. So it kind of took to me, hmm, measure my relationship with Jesus the same way. The more time I spend with him, the greater that connection. So anyway. Oh, my, great. So you need to spend time, more time with my wife? Is that what you tell me? <laughs> <laughs> you don't learn either. Yeah. Do you? Well, yeah. Well, she's, she's not, not here. here. Yeah. 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 No, we're, we're recording this. This is me. Oh, we're recording. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. I said, because I knew we all would remember. <laughs> <laughs> There's some things we don't forget. Yeah. I was uh, nine years old, and we went to South Avenue Baptist. And, of course, with the Sunday school teachers telling you about Jesus and being saved, and Preacher, well, I decided I needed to be in that category of being saved. So I started down the aisle, but I felt like I was walking in slow motion. I mm -hmm. thought that aisle was 10 miles long. Mm -hmm. And I thought I'll never, I will never get there. I will never get there. But I did. And uh, so, you know, and I've never doubted my salvation. Uh, I've not always done what I'm supposed to do. But I've never doubted myself. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You notice that? That day of mm -hmm. too. Yeah, there was a whole lot of when Nisha Rose was there. Yeah, that's right. It was a whole lot of nine year olds. I'm just <laughs> yeah. Tony, yeah. we just Yeah. Les, you too, Les? Yeah, I was I was nine also. I See, there's something about that number school. nine. During <laughs> vacation Bible school and they were one of the lessons they were talking about it wasn't fire and brimstone and like everybody else. Well, maybe that old sermon that John the Baptist went around preaching all the time, repent or die, and go to hell. I mean, basically, yeah. that's all he preached. Yeah. Hellfire and brimstone. It, it works. Melissa? I thought uh, my, my family has gone to Central Baptist in Pasadena. My, my mother was superintendent of the beginners for like 40 some years. My dad was a trustee. And I went, I, I thought I was saved at five, but God came to me at 14 and said, you know, and it was on the Sunday morning before church. I told my mother and I said, I'm not saved. I, I know it. I'm not saved. And we went through the plan. And that's so that for him. You did what? You went through the plan of salvation? Yes. If, if <clears throat> every one of these guys, once again, the lesson confirms. And I was telling you, in the day these young men would study. That's that's what they did. They would study the the, the, the Torah, whatever you want to pronounce that, and other things. And uh, <laughs> that's what they did. 
And it was, it was a high honor for a rabbi to come up and say, come on. Well, the, rab the rabbi didn't come to them. They went to the rabbi. Or, they would, or the rabbi would go to them because he would cherry pick also. Uh, but but it, the bottom line was this. Jesus, Jesus went to those men who weren't like the other men. They were just everyday guys. He didn't go find the best of the best. He went and found everyday guys, fishermen. And the, and the, and the story never changed. He would, the thing that Nathaniel responded to Philip, he said, is there anything that's good that comes out of Nazareth? And Philip's response to him was, come and see. That's it. He used it, look at that. He, Jesus himself uses that. Come and follow me. So that word come is an invitation. We need to go out and do the same thing. What is it? What's the title out there? What's that title say? Share Christ. What was happening with all of these men? Sharing. One shared it with another who shared it with another who shared it with another. And it was very simple. Come see. Come sit down with me. Let me go through these verses with you. That's what we're charged with as Christians. That's what we're charged with, is, is to share this word. And it's, it's, it says, it sounds real simple, sometimes it's not, especially if you're trying to talk to a family member sometimes. They're probably one of the tougher ones to talk to and reach. But it's just, a, it's just share with your neighbor and let it go. And once you've shared it, once you've planted that seed, then let the Holy Spirit do the rest. It's not on you for salvation. It's on him. All you do is plant the seed. But you, in order to plant the seed, you've got to share the good news. Share the gospel. That's, that's one of the things that, that the lesson tried to emphasize. Philip just says, hey, we've, we, I found him. Yeah. He's the, he's the man. Come, he, come I, see. I, I, what, was, it, was it Philip? Or one, it, might, it might have been Philip or one of the others. That they, they, in fact, hey, come and see this guy. Uh, Come see this guy, Jesus, who belong, who's come from the family of Joseph. And the reason he said that was that was the thing back in them days. You're, you were identified by your family. Uh, and that's just a throw, a throw in there. But the thing that Philip did is he didn't try to, con he just simply said, come and see. He didn't try to change his mind. He just said, you need to come and see. And, and because of the background, Nathaniel's background that was pointed out, he said, okay, whatever. And when, as soon as he gets there, Jesus lays it. I mean, he just hammers him. Right? He, I mean, that's where I'm going. He hammers him right there on the spot. He says who he is right to him. The Daniel don't open his mouth, and Jesus just tells him who he is, and that's it. That was all he had to do. It's, it, it, but it's noteworthy to do this. Let's see. We got, we had John and Andrew, Peter and James, Philip, Nathaniel. That's six of them. Every one of them, a different, a different kind of take on it, except for Philip. Jesus went to him personally. Think about that. I think it was Preacher uh, the other night mentioned about Philip. There's not a whole lot about Philip. He was an evangelist. He he was beamed up, beam me up, Scotty. But he, was, he, he wasn't talked about a whole lot. Not like John. Not like James. Not like Peter. Not like, you know, not like those guys. But he was no less important than those guys. He just didn't get talked about a lot. Good lesson for us. We can follow Jesus. We don't have to have the accolades. We just need to follow Jesus. Period. End of story. Just, and here again, they, they, they went to their brother said, come here, let me show you something. They took him and Put him in front of him, and then Jesus did the rest. That's right. Same thing with us. Come, let me share this with you, and then let Jesus do the rest. <clears throat> well, you know, you can't give up on, on people. I mean, you want to, because, and some of y'all have heard this already. I have an uncle, and he was rough as all get out. He'd been married, I don't know how many times, I can't even count them. But um, <clears throat> he was having his third open heart surgery. And I went down to Denison where he was going to have it. And I told him, I said, I 
hold my hands. I told him, I don't know, I have to go down and see Uncle Jack to say, I have to ask him. And so we did. I did. And I, my two aunts, when I said, I'm going to talk to, to Uncle Jack, and they said, we're out of here. <laughs> and so I asked him, I said, are you safe? Uncle Jack, I have to know that when if something was to happen to you and you died, that you would go to heaven. Oh, baby, don't worry about me. I'm fine. I said, are you sure? Yeah. Well, he wasn't sure. And then several years later, um, he got saved. His wife went to church. They lived right across the street from the church every day. Okay? And that preacher came by every morning and had to coffee with him for several years. And he would go, go to church. The preacher would say, well, when you get ready, I'm over there. When you get ready, I'm over there. And one day he got up and walked through that church. And I got a call that said he's been saved and he's going to be baptized. He told her about it. You know, how wonderful it feels that you know, that you know, that you know that the people that you love the most are saved. So if you have family, don't give up on them. But don't push them, just don't give up on them. Yeah, everything you do has got to be done with love. You can't push, shove, beat, force. Okay. So, so what Brad was saying, <clears throat> I, I remember well when uh, we used to go on visitation when, when I started and uh, when I started at one point and I was very, very nervous. What if I go to somebody and I tell them wrong or I, I tell them they don't understand or they misunderstand and I'm responsible for whatever doesn't happen right. And I was really, you know, and the, the older fellow that I went with was a good friend, became a very good friend of mine over the years. But this, is the, this is what he told me. Was tell them, you know, invite them. And he, he, we went through the scripture, you know, to come and see. He said, all we're doing is we're going out and we're inviting them. We're planting the seeds, you know, there's the solar, all the different things that point. But all we're doing is planting the seeds. And I remember at this church that we started, you know, that we started, I mentioned it before, but we would go out and we would visit, we would talk to people. And of course everybody says, well, you know, tell them what you did. Well, I'm me, like you said. Everybody's different. Everybody's had different experiences. So when I tell them what I did, I was very nervous because I was raised in the church. I understood, you know, that we got all these different versions of this book. I don't agree with a whole bunch of them. But I was raised to understand this old King James Version. You know, it's like another language or whatever. But I was raised on it. A lot of people. They don't understand it at all. Those words don't make sense to them. They don't know what the phrases mean. I mean, it's just, and, and it's not important to them. They don't get it. And uh, I, I was like, okay, how do I tell them and show them quickly in the few minutes that we may have together? And uh, so I was nervous about a lot of things. But when he told me that, all we're doing is inviting. If they want to know more, we try to tell them if they ask, but at least we're telling them, you know, where to come. And then it's up to God. We're planting seeds. And what I saw when we were at that church, we went out and we visited. The people that we talked to, and I mean the hundreds of people over the few years that we talked to, a few of them got saved, but there's a very few compared to the ones that we talked to. But I'm literally... There were a few hundred that got saved. They came and made confessions at the church. But it wasn't necessarily the ones that we talked to. See, we went out and planted seeds. But God used, he used us as a place to harvest some of the fruits he was already growing in other places. So he will bless you, our church, as long as we're doing the work. I, I, I'm saying.
Yeah, the other thing, to a point you made also when you, you talk about say, King James is tough to understand. So sometimes your testimony, your explanation is like us talking about, okay, we're going we're gonna to redneck it here. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you giving your take on it or makes it easier for somebody to understand. It may get their attention a little easier than saying, here, sit down and read this. And yeah, it can be confusing. And it's also okay if you don't know the answer, it's okay to say, I don't know, but I'll find out and we're going to talk about it. Yeah. It's okay to say that. It's better to say that than to make something up. Right. Don't make nothing up. Don't make nothing up. But <laughs> it's funny, leadership trying to tell you the same thing. I don't know the answer to that, but I'll find out and get back with you. But you know, there was a quote in our Sunday School lesson, too, about, you know, we already go out and spread the good news of Jesus, but I like the quote that they have that said, evangelism is just one beggar telling another where to find the bread. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, we need to go. Cowboy, close this out, please, sir. Uh, Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be here with you. Thank you, church. We have these people here. You don't really know how much they mean to me. It's been an eye open for the three years that I've been coming here, two years. But I want to thank you to give me the job that I have now. And thank you for my grandkids and my, my wife. If it wouldn't be for them, I wouldn't be here. I thank you for the preachers that we have. I thank you for all the blessings that you're going to show upon us. In Jesus' name, pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.